everybody and welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Lori and this is episode five of the Yes You Can series and this one is in Yes You Can, Protect Your Peace. Okay, so you've heard me say that a lot. You've heard other people say it a lot. It's a whole thing. Protect your peace, protect your peace. Okay, well, what is that? Well, first of all, know what your peace is. It kind of encompasses everything that we talked about this week and that we talk about all, all the time is protecting your peace by establishing your boundaries, protecting your peace by being able to distance from something that you don't understand, protect your peace for being okay with not knowing somebody else's why, protect your peace by not expecting others to do things as you will. That's all protecting your peace. In order to really protect your peace, you got to lower that ego. And on here, I have a five episodes of the Ego Death series. Go back and watch it. It really talks a lot about ego and how to, because you're always, you're always going to have, part of your life is always going to be in your ego, but it doesn't have to be in the id part of your ego that gets really like clingy and needy and demanding and you don't have to live there. So we'll talk to you and it'll help you about that. So let's go through a few of those, right? Let's say you're protecting your peace at work. I get this question a lot. Like, okay, I'm fortunate to work from home, but I still deal with people, but you may not be. You may have to go around people that you don't even really choose to be around them. Some are great. Some you don't vibe with. And there's just, there's just constantly negative. There's constantly negative. There's constantly, maybe you feel that they don't do as much as you do. That's the expectation thing. So number one, accept the fact that I don't care where you work, unless you're working by yourself. And even then you still have to rely on other people for things. You don't, can't do it all in the world by yourself. But you have to realize that their stuff is not yours to carry. There will always be somebody who you feel that you do more than that they get away with this and that you're going to have to accept it. Radical acceptance. Go listen to the podcast on radically, radical acceptance. Got to have it. Now, you don't have to engage in it. You don't have to go, well, I don't understand this and I don't understand that. It is what it is. And just because you leave one place doesn't mean the next place is going to get better, but sometimes it does. But you have to accept that sometimes that's just, it's not always going to be fair. So to protect your peace always is going to start with you. It's not about other people. It's always about you. So to protect your peace is going to come with radical acceptance. Radically accepting that the idea of this relationship, let's say it's a relationship, isn't quite as you thought it would be. Accept that. Is it something that you can deal with it with or is it something that you cannot? Whichever one it is, you need to make that decision. Don't wait for the other person to change and all of that. That's, that's protecting your peace. Is acceptance of someone's actions as who as not who they are, but of how they are. And you don't have to like it. You don't have to love it. You don't have to agree with it but then be able to say, you know what? I like this person. We've been friends for a long time. It's just not vibing with me anymore. It's a little sad. It's not really what I wanted it to be, but for my own peace, and really you're protecting their peace too. So you know how you care about other people. You're not just protecting your peace. You're actually protecting theirs because even though you may not speak it, you may not say, this is what I have an issue with. I mean, it's always helpful to say that, but let's say you don't, Energy doesn't lie. A person can feel it. You can feel if you like, and sometimes what you feel, well, all the times what you feel is not facts anyway, but sometimes you may feel like somebody's pulling away from you. They're not, maybe they're just working on themselves. And so you're protecting another person's peace by being able to distance it. The radical acceptance for protecting your peace is to accept that even though you like it, even though you see this relationship being something, regardless of what the relationship is, accept that it isn't. That's protecting your peace. Except that you only have, acceptance is going to be the whole thing for protecting your peace. Except that you only have right now. Except that you only have right now. Yes, have goals, do those things. Except, however, that you have to stay in the present space in order to stay grounded. That's protecting your peace. If something, now, sometimes you're going to have to do things you don't feel like doing. Like I said, might be a coworker, might do those things. Distance when you can. This means if it, your parents do not get a free pass, your family does not get a free pass. So if it doesn't feel good to you, and like I said, if they're toxic to you, there's a good chance they feel that you're toxic to them. You don't have to like it, but it is what it is. Okay, so that's, again, the acceptance of it. Acceptance that it isn't everybody else. Protecting your peace is realizing, no, your situation isn't because of everybody else. Yeah, there might be a reason that that's how you got there, but you can't live there. To protect your peace is to not live in a victim mentality. To protect your peace is to use the pain and turn that into power. That's protecting your peace. So there's a lot that comes into that. It's not just about avoiding things. That's the other thing. Protecting your peace is about facing things head on. That's your exposure therapy, exposing yourself to the things that you don't like. That's where it lives. Protecting your peace is pushing yourself out the comfort zone. 
protecting your peace is always having time for self. I always say an hour a day. So it's going to take you a little bit of time doing those five journals. And then if you're going to work out, then if you're going to do something else, you want to have some coffee, you want to, whatever, that's protecting your peace. Another way of protecting your peace, do not follow things, people in real life or social media that does not move the needle for you, meaning does not enhance you by either entertaining you, educating you, or just affirmations or positivity. If it's not sending you something that's benefiting you, stop following it, stop watching it, and don't doom scroll. To protect your peace, you don't doom scroll. You don't go and you see something that you disagree with, and now you take a deep dive into the comments because for what? That's your ego. Your ego is saying, no, these people are wrong. They're not wrong. To protect your peace is to understand that your version of right and wrong may not be everybody's version of right and wrong, and that's okay. To protect your peace is to accept that other people are not you. This doesn't mean that you have this big, bad heart, this big, bad, great heart, and they don't. No, no, no. That would be a victim mentality. Accept that people do things differently. That's to protect your peace. Then when you say, okay, this doesn't align with me, you don't have to explain that to the world. And you don't judge somebody. Protecting your peace, and yes, you can, is not judging somebody else. Why are you judging them? Well, I don't like how they do that. Well, you don't have to. That's protecting your peace. Protecting your peace is self-love. I think people think protecting their peace is like something really like vague, and it isn't. There's so many levels of protecting your peace. Protect your peace by educating yourself on something new every single day. Learn a different, learn a foreign language and learn one word a day in the foreign language. Read a chapter of a book. Definitely write in your five journals. Uh, go for a walk. Get out in nature. Get off your cell phone. Just a fact. You know the rule of thumb in my world and, my, and for me, one hour at max other than when I do my lives, one hour max at scroll time. Like, and that's for all things, not just like go to YouTube for an hour, go to Instagram for an hour. No, 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 no. It's collectively. You can protect your peace by doing something just for you. Create, find a hobby. Mine's crochet. Yours could be something else. Yes, you can. Yeah, you can. You got to allow yourself to feel uncomfortable. Yes, you can. All of those voices that are not yours that you have adopted by other people are telling you that it's too hard. That's not true. It's not too hard. You're just gonna have to put effort to change the narrative. You're gonna have to put effort in that to change how your brain is wired. Because now that negative thought pattern or whatever the thought pattern is, you have now established as a default. That's your default thought patterns. And it isn't something that's gonna benefit you. So when you say you wanna protect your peace, that means you have to be willing to be super uncomfortable and super like, okay with the unknown. Accepting that the unknown is a spectacular, beautiful place is where you're gonna need to be. Cause you can't control it. That'd be your ego. You cannot control the unknown. You can enhance things, you can eat healthy, you can do all those things, but that's in the now. You're doing that now with hopefully long-term benefits but you're doing it now. If you're gonna do yoga, do it now, but don't do so with the idea of feeling better. If you're gonna meditate and do your journals, do it now and do it because this is your time to spend with you. Don't do it with the idea of that I'm gonna feel better, I gotta do this, that's the byproduct. To protect your peace is to know that you are a priority for you, but you don't need to be a priority for anybody else. That's protecting your peace. So this, do you see what I'm saying? So I think when people here protect their peace, all of a sudden they automatically think it just blocks people out. No, it's about allowing yourself to finally be the important person that you want to be. That's never going to happen unless you get uncomfortable. So can you do it? Yes, you can. Is it hard? Yeah. If you want to use that word hard, I don't want to use the word hard. I want to say, is it going to take effort? Is it going to take time to rewire that thought process? Yes. Can you do it? Yes, you can. So a little call to action here is if this is something that you struggle with where you feel like you just don't have any peace and you're always looking externally, remember the rule, you can't heal externally. External forces do not give you internal love. It's always inside out. You always heal inside out. Are you willing? Good question. And we're going to end it on this because yes, you can. But are you willing to embrace the unknown, be uncomfortable, 
be okay with people getting a little upset or salty with you, distancing when needed, putting yourself as a priority. Are you willing to do that? Because if you are, yes, you can.